<laughs> Game over. Press any button to continue. Welcome to Any Button Podcast, the gaming podcast brought to you by the co-founders of Double Dash Jump. This is the game clubby mot. And I'm Captain Ben. Not to be confused with Juice Box Ben. That's a niche joke for about seven people, and I think maybe one of them watched it, so there you go, Jess. I'm glad that seven out of twenty people just laughed. <laughs> um again. This episode is a little bit shorter on actual big gaming news because, well, nothing really is. Nothing's, yeah. There's been, there's been stuff happening, but it's not game games. It's gaming industry, which is yeah, what which we is... cover. But, uh, yeah, we do have two major to- talking points, so hopefully this doesn't go on a little bit too long. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe did just come out this week, and that's coming out to fairly good reviews, but... Let's be honest. While Nintendo does a lot of questionable things and makes questionable decisions, it's pretty goddamn hard to fuck up Mario Kart. Is is there a bad Mario Kart? I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. Like, how can you can't screw that up? No. Um, Also, shout out to Karen. Nintendo, Nintendo Karen, Karen, we shall call her, since no one knows what her actual name is. Uh, we know her Instagram account, which um, is it was like, a tongue twister. On yeah, it's like track. you am who I what I am or something like yeah. that. Uh, showing that she went and bought the outfit from the actual Switch ad. Um, this has landed her on the very prestigious Double Dash Jumps Top Twenty People for Twenty Seventeen list. Though that's not an actual thing, and probably never will be. Although she does have her own subreddit. That's a pretty big deal. That's, yeah. If I had my own subreddit, I would introduce myself like that. Hi, I'm, <laughs> I'm Matt from R Matt. What's good? Um, what have you been playing? Hopefully you don't get too caught up plugging in things in this week that you accidentally unplugged the fridge again. And by fringe, I mean, ask me what I've been playing this week. What was that? <laughs> okay. Um, I've been playing some of Overwatch's new PvE mode, Uprising, which is pretty fun for me because I, I can't play Overwatch. Like, I'm just horrible at multiplayer. Um, but what about yourself? <laughs> um, I've been playing Destiny. Uh, Overwatch actually haven't gone back to Persona 5. Really? Yeah. I've been watching a lot of the Jimquisition podcast, though. It's so much so that now all my suggestions is just Jim, more Jimquisition. I'm like, thanks, YouTube. I, I have that, but for uh, game ranks. I went on a binge over the weekend and it wasn't good. <laughs> um, More Overwatch stuff? In quickfire speculation, not news, because it's confirmed, not confirmed. Uh, when the current uprising event f- finishes, uh, the next scheduled, and that's scheduled, scheduled with scheduled. The next scheduled, okay. It's scheduled with a question mark. Event is the summer games coming back from last year, because Daddy Jeff said uh, in the Overwatch forums last year. Ellipsis, we will run it again next year. Our summer games are on a yearly schedule, not a four-year schedule. So it's End not the question. actual Olympics. No. It's summer games. And summer uh, happens once a year, as yeah. far as I'm aware. <laughs> of course, this is slightly out of context, uh, context because this was in the midst of discussion about that we couldn't buy summer games skins and sprays and all the stuff that came limited to that event with game in-game credits. But nevertheless, more loose here, Paul. Yeah, see, I want Summer Games to come back ASAP because Summer Games actually came up in a time of my life where I literally did not have Wi-Fi for my PS4. (laughs) So I never even touched it. I didn't even hear about it until I think it was like two days until it ended where I took my PS4 to somewhere with Wi-Fi, plugged it in, got one loot crate, and then that was it. Yeah. Sad days. I bought 100 boxes... And streamed that. And really? That was miserable. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry for you. Um, 
here at anybody and we've talked quite extensively on how we think Microsoft Game Pass is a good thing. What we never quite realized no. since we're both not Xbox people is that in fact the Game Pass is still an alpha. Wow, okay. GG us. See, I knew Game Pass wasn't in Australia, but I thought that was a favoritism for America thing, not because it was in alpha all this time. In good news though, uh, Game Pass is wrapping up its alpha, alpha phase next week. Don't know if it goes into a beta phase for that. Like, would it but, go into a public beta, or would it go into, uh, again, another... I think it was a private alpha, I'm yeah. going to assume. Um, so maybe another private beta. Either way, we should hopefully... Means it goes live soon. Yeah. And maybe this... for at least people in the US. Maybe not international. No. But the sooner it is released in America... Like, Netflix was in America for ages before it even touched our shores. So... Well, I mean, it touched our shores if you went through a VPN. Well, yeah. And I'm sure, technically speaking, if you wanted to go through all the effort, you could VPN your Xbox and get a American Xbox account so that you could hit up that sweet, sweet Game Pass glory. Uh, so, two big-ish things happened this week. Polygon did a bad journalism job, and analysts predicted the Switch Mini. Um, so... What? Peek behind the curtains, uh... That how we structure the show. Normally I would prefer just tackling one of these topics and do a bit more of an in-depth discussion about it, and then we would that would round out the end of our episode. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try and smash through both of them in enough time so this show doesn't run over time too much. Um, so we'll start up. Polygon screwed up earlier this week, reporting that there was some s- sort of big feud between... Uh, Jason Schreier and some game devs after Schreier posted a feature article on Kotaku called Horizon Dawn uses all sorts of clever tricks to look so good. This article reported on the 45 minute documentary produced by a Dutch organization called Vipro. This was supposed to springboard it into the general, uh, larger general discussion of what we don't know that game devs do. Uh, yeah. Um, Shrey highlighted a particular GIF from uh, the documentary that shows a method called Fostrum Culling, which use, utilizes a technique that saves on processing power by only loading things within the player's camera view, which then frees up processing power, obviously, to do other things in the background. Like, that's not an unheard of thing. It's it's happened a lot with, like, texture popping, for example. If, <laughs> if you've played a game and you're looking at something and then you quickly turn around to something else and it looks kind of crap for a second and then it loads the textures in, it's kind of the similar, like, mm. I mean, cause if and effect. If you're not a game developer, then you probably wouldn't know quite what this is about. You might have noticed something like that, but you probably wouldn't understand the full concept of why that happens yep. and or even that it's a widely utilized technique yeah um and it's certainly not revolutionary for this day and age so understandable people might interpret this to be like oh my god this is new and you know amazing fantastic um so some game devs had a laugh at this over twitter and sort of poked jokes at the article's expense one twitter user mocked did you know that instead of rendering a human person on screen the game composes models out of thousands of tiny triangles wait you know what's funny about this is that that's called a polygon and this is about polygon that's a sense of irony i never realized while writing this i like i feel like the you know person who wrote this is trying to be smart and clever they missed that perfect well that was a twitter user that's an actual game dev and then someone else from polygon picked this up i'm just saying game devs usually a clever guy um yeah polygon then picked up on these few tweets and ran with this controversy writing an argument uh writing an article which mocked game developers back for being condescending that people might not know this uh polygon has since then edited this article changing the heading and changing the overall tone of the article. Schreier also noted on Twitter that Polygon never reached out to him to get an official statement. Hello. (laughs) Um, I just hope that this isn't has anything to touch with Griffin 
McElroy from Polygon because I love Griffin and his brothers. They have hilarious podcasts, so I hope they're not getting any backlash. But what I love about this is how personal Polygon took this. Like, yeah. They were like, I can't believe that they, they were so attacked. These people was just horrible to people who didn't understand. Maybe that was the joke. Maybe they were like having a specific dig at Polygon by saying this joke about Polygons. And well, no, that original tweet was going back to Shrier's article. Oh, to Shrier, not okay. No worries. So the initial article was some was Shrier, and then, then we've got this tweet guy, and then Polygons followed this up. Yeah, with, with a huge con- controversy between game devs attacking journalists, which didn't actually happen. So you said that Polygon made two boo boos. What was the uh, second one? Uh, they didn't make two. They just made that one. Okay. Uh, so they just have two ar- the articles of conversation. They've got one article that just got heavily edited. Okay. Of, over the course of people going, well, you fucked up. What I'm trying to ask is, what is this next thing on my screen? <laughs> All right. Uh, so coming back to um, other major uh, talking point, Switch Mini. Okay. Uh, Citigroup, a group of industry analysts, put out a bold prediction this week saying that Nintendo's next move will be to make the current small console smaller and lighter, uh, probably teetering towards the younger players who don't have quite as big hands and probably struggle a little bit with holding the weight up for a long period of time if you're running it in uh, undocked mode. Even then, it's not that heavy. Like, I don't think it's that heavy. I th- honestly would say that the next big thing would be the Switch XL. Yeah. Like, I, I would bet on the Switch XL before I bet on the Switch Mini. Because I think the number one complaint I've heard is that the controllers are too small. That's coming from a lot of adults. This generally talks to... Uh, Nintendo's family-friendly approach going for generally you know, younger audiences, you know, you know, five to seven. Yeah, but that's it. Like that's what I'm saying is they've previously they've already made a switch. Uh, you know, the 3DS XL. Uh, but then this, again, the new this is just a prediction. This is yeah. Then again, the new 3DS is a lot smaller than the original 3DS. So, yep. so I think it all depends on technology and. What we're it's, going for. it's whether it goes bigger or smaller. This doesn't really seem out of line for Nintendo, as they've gone through many iterations yeah. of their handhelds. They've got 3DS, 3DS XL, new 3DS, new new 3DS, and so on and so forth. I think I think we're just a, that's what the uh, that's what gaming is. That's what technology is these days. We've got you know the uh, iPhone Seven, then the iPhone Seven S kind of thing. We've got the PS Four, then the PS Four Pro. Got an Xbox, Xbox and then Scorpio, Scorpio, which is... It's, it's just the... Because technology is accelerating at such a rate that um, I think it, it is a, you know, a software arms race, I think at this point, is <laughs> yeah. the uh, main thing, is that the software that we're making, um, while we're, the hardware is getting is good enough to make the Scorpio, the software isn't good enough for the next iteration of the Xbox. If, if you get what I mean. Yep. That's just my uh, little two cents for that. For that little uh, bubble there. Alright, I think I smashed it a little bit faster than, than I was intending. I don't mind. I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> yeah, we've got a dog. It's great. As always, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, sorry, it's a little light on news. Or real if, news. If, yeah, if... If we come to next week and we find that it's uh, light again, we'll we'll have a little something special up our sleeves. Uh, remember, Facebook is where we post updates and new episodes first, so like us there to see when this goes up each Sunday night. Uh, or if you want to delve into our personal lives, check out us out on Twitter at bmw 3 and at should be Matt. Rec- uh, that, that was it. You, yeah. you wanted to continue the sentence, oh, yeah, but there wasn't anything else to say. Uh, but if you are not a social media person, we still have the deal of a lifetime. right? If you just hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it, 
you will get you, this is gonna blow your mind. You'll get desktop notifications when we post a new video. That's amazing. This is unheard of. Here first. <laughs> Alright, say goodbye, Nimoy. Hang on, I'll show you all Nimoy. Sorry for those just listening, but for those watching, this is Nimoy. I'll I'll cut hide his shame a bit. <laughs>